What is up, players? It's Warboss here up in its mug. Today we're doing an unbooking of the How to Paint Citadel Miniatures Warhammer Age of Sigmar Iron Jaws booklet. Now, compared to other How to Paint books that Games Workshop has released, for example, the Dark Eldar, uh, Space Wolves, the Tyranids, all of those come to mind, the Blood Angels. I think they've also done an Ultramarines one. This one is almost more of like a packet. It's very, it doesn't have like a hard binding to it and it's not very large compared to the other books that I've read. But let's take you through it and see if it might be something you want to purchase. For uh, for reference, the price that I paid for it at retail was uh, an equivalent to, let's say, getting... If you get two tacos at Jack in the Box for a buck each, then this was like getting 20 tacos. So there you go, you can do the math. Now when you pop it open, I'm not gonna really go over the the fluff too much. We're just gonna take a look at what you would kind of gain from this book if you were a painter, like myself. So you got a little introduction here, and uh, they call them the Iron Suns work plan. They're a little bit different. It says how to paint iron jaws, but you're really painting this kind of alternate color scheme called the Iron Suns. And I think the difference is that they're a little bit more dark yellow rather than that bright vibrant yellow but I actually prefer this this actually looks more realistic to me when you see the the chips and the scraping and all of the kind of weathering effects that they've gone with so I actually say actually a lot I really like this color scheme because you can tell even the armor on the legs that looks more like something in Oruk would would have than a very bright vibrant yellow armor. So they're good enough to list the paints that you are going to need and they kind of show you some examples. Again, you can use these... It's another thing I say again when I haven't said anything. Ah, my little quirks. So basically, let's go with basically, you can use these techniques for any orc model or Oruk. You don't have to use them solely on these new miniatures. Of course, Games Workshop wants you to buy these new big giant mega knobs in <laughs> heavy armor miniatures, but you could use them on your black orcs, like here you can see them, using them on the black orcs in the back, whatever orc models in your army you have. So really briefly just open it up and take a look. You've got first a look at the Citadel spray paints. Now I'm using the Citadel spray paints for my my May painting challenge this year, my 2016 painting challenge. And I'm using Mornfang Brown for Skaven and Incubi Darkness for my High Elves. Looks like I, sh I could have used McCrag Blue or that Kalidor Sky would have been better. But, you know, if you're doing Necrons, there's no reason why you should spray your model white and then have to hand brush them in Lead Belcher when there is a Lead Belcher spray. My philosophy is if a model is primarily one color, like, for example, these orcs are primarily one color. Their armor is one color, so you could paint them in that color. Or you could do it like how they recommend, go with a white undercoat and then hand paint the different layers. If you have more time, that's the way that I would go. But for my Skaven, Mornfang Brown is a great neutral color to start. Incubi Darkness is a great color to build off of the High Elves and then just add in the colors later that you want to work with. So it takes you through the different steps. I kind of like how they talk about base coating and uh, that just pretty much means you are putting the first colors onto your, your undercoat, your primer, and then they take you through washes or shading, I guess they call it, and then two kinds of highlighting technique, dry brushing and layering. And I, I like the way they kind of talk about both of them. They they show you a little bit of how how to apply the model, kind of how they hold the model while they go at it, and I, I think this is good. So yeah, Games Workshop, much better than just showing the model from one static pose, actually showing the brush strokes. If they, they were doing a live tutorial, this is kind of the way that I would do it, you know, show the model how you would hold it, what angle you would hold it to get the best application, and then go with that. I like also that they included basing, so they show you how to use their, of course, they want you to use their, their texture paints. The way that I use texture paints is I put my basing grit down first, and then I put the 
uh, the texture paint on over if I use texture paint at all. It really seals and locks it in, but just by itself, you have to add a lot to the base to make it have this kind of texture. And I don't have that kind of money to buy tubs and tubs of this stuff. They also show you how to do the green glow and how to do bone. So that's pretty good. They show you two different methods of painting their, gosh, what are they called? Gore gruntas, which to me basically look just like razor gores from old Warhammer fantasy, but whatever. And they show you, you can either go with it from a white primer or a black primer. So I appreciate that because people will paint things differently. Then they go to one of their giant maw crusher lizards, how to do the scales, how to do the skin. I kind of like this modeled or dappled effect that they've created. They do the texture on the wings, the bone. And then they show you at the end here some different alternative color schemes like the blood tooths, the sky bashes, which is a little bit more silver, the dog rocks choppas, which is primarily blue, and ash eater boys. So if you're a cynic like me, you could basically say that Games Workshop is really advertising to their 40k orc base and saying, look, Instead of the evil sons, you just paint your oryx like you would paint your evil sons. Uh, these silver guys are kind of new, I guess. But then you've got here death skulls complete with little checkers on their armor. And goths. Black armor with some red detailing. But it's good that they include all of the paint and they, they give you some little tips on how to work on them. This is what I'm more used to seeing, a model that is gone step by step, but it doesn't really show you the painting application. So I like that they showed you the different angles. This looks like snake bites with the heavy emphasis on the bone colored armor, but A, that's okay. And finally, we've got ZX Weird Lads, which is more of an interesting kind of orange that I, I kind of like. Crypt Boys here in the back, some more predominantly black armor. So it takes you through a lot of great tips, I think, that a beginning painter might use. If you're an advanced or intermediate level painter, then you can still find some some good tips or just good uh, review here. And if you really need some inspiration, this is great, I think, if you want some inspiration on how to paint. The price point is so much better than the old $20 for for more. So I, I, I think that it's worth it. If you are going to be painting these guys and collecting these guys, if you're a 40k player and you collect orcs and you want to kind of brush up on your skills, then this is also, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a worthwhile consideration. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching this little unbooking.